Uh, hi everyone, Fun, Fun in the Sun, Sun here, the internet's busiest music nerd, and it's time for a review of this new Future Islands album, People Who Aren't There Anymore. Future Islands, the Maryland-based synth-pop outfit that is currently now on their seventh full-length album, I believe. They've really been on a consistent output grind ever since they put out their first record in 2008, and I will admit my coverage of their stuff has been kind of spotty over the years, as they are a band with a specific sound and and a specific mission. Imagine if a group built almost their entire vibe around a passionate, righteous synth-pop classic like Rod Stewart's Young Turks, but with even more theatrical lead vocals and poetic lyricism. And that is more or less the vibe that Future Islands puts out there. They have somehow been doing that for over a decade at this point, and there are pros and cons to that level of consistency. For one, I know a Future Island song instantly when I hear one. The downside side to this, though, is that Future Islands has proven to be not very versatile over the years. They're more a band that has devoted their catalog to meticulously fine-tuning a single sound. This has also led to track lists on many of their records that are a little one-dimensional, kind of predictable, and truth be told, I haven't always been crazy about the production on their records either, as sometimes I think quality-wise it's a little bit below where it should be for a band at their level of popularity and exposure. With flat and dry mixes that come across way less exuberant and colorful than the material and instrumentation actually going into the songs. Now, I do think there was actually an improvement in the sound quality of the band's music on their last record in 2020, As Long As You Are, but simultaneously that was also maybe the most moody album the band had dropped up until that point too, with vocal leads that usually saw Sam Herring kind of wandering about a bit more. It, it did not bring the sizzling pop uh, that many records have previously, especially singles. But on People Who Aren't There Anymore, I think Future Islands is really back in their banger bag. And on top of that, this record features, hands down, the most vibrant and lush, intense, and well-balanced production of all of their albums to this point. All of them. I don't know why it's taken this long, but uh, the sound quality difference is apparent right out of the gate. As on the opener, the drums are so crisp, the plinky, stretched synth leads are great, and uh, generally across this record, I think a lot of the synth patches and synth work are a lot more unique and creative. The roaring bass on the hook hits and hits hard, and sometimes on previous recordings, uh, rushes of synthesizers or you know explosions in volume within the mix often felt maybe like a little boxed in or constrained, uh, not so much here. Meanwhile, the deepest notes in Sam Herring's vocal register really resonate. Those growls sound beautiful. The drama is palpable, especially as he is uh, describing rides on mass transit that feel so heavy uh, they carry the weight of the world on their shoulders. Now again, this track is not stylistically a night and day difference from anything Future Islands have done prior. It's a similar essence. It's the same as it ever was. In fact, when the synths come into the mix on this track, it is giving seasons a little bit, but I will say this track is still enjoyable and gets by for me because it does feel revamped. We are getting the same and familiar fiery grooves, passionate and dramatic performances, but now I would say with a more high gloss finish. The single The Tower also features a lot of these same qualities and moves along at a great clip. Same with Give Me the Ghost Back, though I would say the synths and guitar work on that one actually bring kind of a cinematic feel to the track. Same gives an especially explosive performance too. Just when you think this man's hit an emotional peak or has kind of shown you all of his cards, he finds another way to kind of wow you with his vocals or lyricism. Also, some of the best slow burners in the band's discography land on this album too, which was a surprise because typically songs of this stripe from the band on previous records uh, would tend to lose me. But the themes of love and devotion on Deep in the Night are beautiful and striking. Meanwhile, the fight is a powerful ballad with a glistening hook that slaps just as hard as any of the peppier cuts here, and also the lush and beautiful layers of instrumentation on Corner of My Eye sound amazing too. Not to mention the storytelling on this track is great, with Sam uh, going on about an old friend who passed away and not being able to let go or move on because of the impact felt by him uh, from
from this person while they were still alive and in his life. And there's most certainly a theme to Sam's writing on this LP too, as he explores the complexities of a human connection, as well as the human condition. Like on The Thief, where he describes uh, being let in by someone emotionally and being vulnerable. Or Iris, where he is singing about the difficulties of family bonds, and grudges, and bad seeds, and bad beginnings, uh, leading to rotten fruit, or just bad outcomes down the road. And these are just two of many moments on this LP that uh, really bring the record title home. I will say, though, I think in the final leg, the album begins to paint itself in a corner a little bit. Peach is one of a few more motivational cuts on here, where Sam is fighting against the will to give up. Along the same thematic lines, this track is maybe the most relatable universally. There's the sickness, which is uh, another simmer of a song. I think it's the weakest slow cut of the bunch, but uh, still not, not a bad song by any means. And the closing track is kind of cute. I think production-wise, it regresses a little bit to an earlier stage in the band's sound. The beat is a little lo-fi. The rest of the instrumentation kind of comes off a little claustrophobic. Not a lot of space between everything. It's a little plain aesthetically too, but I suppose there is something in the fact that this track is delivering such a humble ending to an album uh, that had such a grand opening. Plus, this wouldn't be the first album to go for a kind of a stripped back, low-key, intimate energy for the final song. But yeah, outside of this record starting a bit stronger than it finishes, I think this album is great and possibly Future Island's best so far, even if a lot of people don't necessarily realize it because, uh, again, I feel like they've staled out their sound a little bit over the years and most likely the favorite album from this group uh, for any fan is, is going to be the LP they're first introduced to them through. But again, regardless, I think this record is a truly top tier from them and likely will be one of the best indie pop and synth pop albums we get in 2024. I'm feeling a decent too strong eight on this one. Tran, Zishin, have you given this album a listen? Did you love it? Did you hate it? What would you rate it? You're the best, you're the best. What should I review next? Hit the like if you like. Please subscribe and please don't cry. Hit the bell as well. Over here next to my head is another video that you can check out. Hit that up or a link to subscribe to the channel. Anthony Fantano, Future Islands, uh, forever.